thank you so much for having me here. I'm really just thrilled and honored to be here. I want to uh, thank the Staglin family, especially the Sullen, Sullivan family and the, the AIM Foundation for making this work possible. It's really critical for us at, at this particular stage in the research, and this funding will make a huge difference. Um, what the funding is for is a project called Neurally Targeted Interventions to Reduce Early Childhood Anxiety. And before I get into the brain here, I just kind of want to remind us all of, of a, a very common story, something we've experienced ourselves, um, I'm sure our kids have, our nieces, our nephews, and it's the first day of school jitters. You're standing there in front of, maybe it's preschool, maybe it's kindergarten, and you're a little bit scared. You don't know, is it gonna be a mean teacher? Are these kids gonna like me? I've never been here before. I have to be away from my mom and my dad. Most of us are able to sort of pull up our bootstraps and march on into school. Maybe it's because our mom told us or our dad told us it's gonna work out fine. Uh, maybe we're a little bit excited that we're gonna meet some new friends. Um, but most of us are able to get up and go. Um, however, some preschoolers can't do it. Um, it's too scary. The fear is too strong. And instead of heading on into school, they really feel like running away. And it's not just the first day. It keeps going and going. It leads into trouble falling asleep. They can't learn at school. They can't make friends. Um, this kind of fear is what we consider a clinically significant kind of anxiety, an anxiety disorder. And anxiety disorders come in many different kind of shapes and flavors. I mentioned this kind of preschool jitters as one example, but there are many other types of triggers for anxiety across the lifespan. Maybe not hitting in preschool, but maybe elementary school, middle school, adolescence. But one thing we do know about anxiety is one of the very earliest psychiatric disorders, often setting the stage for, for other more serious problems later on, including depression. Um, but how common? is this type of clinically significant anxiety. It turns out it's shockingly common. Um, one in three children, by the time they reach adolescence, will have experienced some form of clinically significant anxiety. So what happens to these kids? Who do they grow up to be? Well, excitingly, many of them learn to manage their anxiety. They learn to manage sequela of anxiety, such as depression, which often follows it. And these kids turn out great. In fact, some of them are our leaders in media, in music, in politics. Um, so what I mean to say by this slide is anxiety is so common, it's really yours, mine, and ours, um, but it can also be something that, that kids growing up can learn to manage and do just fine. Um, on the flip side, if anxiety goes unmanaged and untreated, it can lead to really serious long-term consequences, including school dropout, unemployment, social isolation, depression, substance abuse, and most severely, even suicide. So very critical to learn how to man manage anxiety and to get it managed early. So as a child and adolescent psychiatrist, this is kind of what I'm trying to do. Um, we have treatments that work for anxiety, but they don't work for everyone. And in particular, anxiety can be very hard to treat at young, young ages, four, five, six, where kids may not even be able to label its anxiety that's driving avoidance behaviors. Um, so what this Rising Star Award is um, intended to do is to help us learn how can we help children grow out of anxiety. So where do we even begin um, to, to tackle that problem? Well, as you've heard from other speakers today, where anxiety starts, like other mental health problems, anxiety really starts at the level of the brain. And one of the things that, that we've learned from decades of um, animal research as well as human imaging work in adults and adolescents and a little bit in, in children, children are harder to image, is that where in the brain anxiety originates is at least in part in the amygdala, which is shown here on the, the left side of the screen. So the amygdala, it turns out, is this little almond-shaped region that's right behind your earlobes. And we know that when that amygdala is hyperreactive to threat, whether it's the first day of school or whether it's a new person you're afraid you, you know, you're gonna meet, um, any type of acute threat, that amygdala really starts firing. Um, that can contribute 
to the expression of anxiety. But it's not only that, just like there's no one gene that causes schizophrenia, there's no one brain region that causes anxiety. Another thing we know that it's sort of a ratio, if you will, between this amygdala hyperreactivity and on the right side of the screen, um, the, the frontal cortex, which mediates a broad term that um, I'm gonna call effortful control. Effortful control includes many things. It includes our ability to really pay attention when something's distracting us. It includes the ability to inhibit a prepotent response or an instinctive response, including the ability to inhibit fear. So that little kid pulling up her bootstraps and marching into school, she's using some effortful control. Um, so kind of go, going back to that first day jitters, I would invite any of you to recall your own first day of preschool. I remember mine, and I remember being terrified that, you know, these kids are all going to know each other already. I'm not going to fit in. They won't know me. But at the same time, thinking to myself, well, let's problem solve here. I probably didn't put it in that words in my five-year-old head. But I thought, you know, if I put on my best plastic beads and a long dress, maybe I'll walk into that school and they're really going to kind of like me. And so what I had was probably a hyperreactive amygdala, a little too much fear. But the other thing I had was a lot of effortful control. And by having a lot of effortful control, I was able to march on into school. And that's the premise of what we're trying to do with this um, particular uh, project that this award is funding, is look and see, is it possible by pushing up effortful control in the brain, by training this prefrontal cortex, and in particular a region called the ACC, or the anterior cingulate, which is right here, by pushing that up, can we push fear down and lead to a better outcome for anxious kids? How to do that? Um, well, to even get at that question, we need to be able to measure this amygdala reactivity to threat in little kids, to be able to measure this frontal cortical ability to exert effortful control. And recent work that we've been doing over the last two years have really been developing these methods. Um, and while I'm not putting little kids into MRI scanners, I, I thought they probably wouldn't be too into that, um, what we've been able to do instead um, to measure fear, that amygdala reactivity, is to use this technology called fear potentiated startle. And it's really very simple. All it is is putting two little electrodes under the eye to measure your blink reflex or your startle reflex. It turns out that in animals, that startle reflex had been mapped very closely to amygdala reactivity. So the larger the magnitude of the startle reflex, the more your amygdala is reactive to fear. On the flip side, how do we measure effortful control, that thing we want to increase so they can sort of feel the fear and do it anyways? Um, here, we're using an EEG technique where kids play a simple computer game while they're wearing an EEG cap, and about 50 milliseconds after they make just a simple cognitive mistake on this task, their midline frontal cortex, or that anterior cingulate ACC that I mentioned, um, generates something called the error-related negativity, or ERN, which is depicted here, um, which is, is measured via the EEG. And what that ERN signifies is indexing effortful control. The bigger your ERN, the better you're able to flexibly adapt your behavior. So, What's the evidence that this is gonna be even possible to do? We kinda of have this idea, we kinda of have measures of you know, maybe amygdala reactivity with this fear potentiated startle, the effortful control piece with the error related negativity. Well, I've been fortunate to be able to collaborate with um, investigators at Michigan State University, one of whom is named Jason Moser. He's an expert in the ERN and has another colleague, Emily Durbin, who has developed a training the brain or effortful control camp. This EC camp is really incredibly simple. Um, all it is is inviting kids to play in a camp type situation with some friendly counselors. Um, games that they might be playing anyways, red light, green light, um, Simon Says, uh, freeze game, dance around crazily to music and freeze. All games that exercise this effortful control, this ability to inhibit a response in a hopefully non-scary setting. What Jason and Emily have done is by delivering these 
camp exercises over the course of five days, Monday through Friday, three hours a day, in healthy kids is they've been able not only to get the kids better at playing the games, all through the week the counselors are saying, hey, you made a mistake, here's how you could do a little bit better. So they get better at the games, that is increasing their behavioral effortful control. But in these healthy youth, Jason and Emily have also found that the ERN, if measured before and after this one week of just playing these types of games, the ERN increases. So what the Sullivan Family AIM Rising Star Award is gonna allow us to do is to test the same effortful control training camp in clinically anxious youth. So these are preschoolers four to six years old with the idea that instead of sort of forcing them to feel the fear and do it anyways, we're gonna go in the back door, drive up this effortful control as measured by the ERN, and in addition to measuring that before and after these games, this one week of EC camp, we'll be measuring the fear potentiated startle, hypothesizing that as EC goes up, fear should go down. And ultimately, what we hope to do with that is to help these kids become less anxious. Um, so here, the, the first day of school jitters instead of running away. These are kids that are gonna be able to go off and go into school. Um, so with that, I wanna thank you very much for your attention, and again, just state how happy I am to be here. What an honor. Thank you.